Hello and welcome to another Blender Geometry Nodes tutorial on my channel. After I modeled the astronaut, I wanted to create a more complex space scene. I decided for this reference image here. This is a boom of the ISS and I thought this would be a nice Blender project. The astronauts are installing or repairing some technical device and they can hold on to the boom with the help of these yellow bars or handrails. And when you take a closer look, you can see that these bars have different lengths. Here in the background, we have a bar with two brackets. Here is one with three and here is one with four. There are a lot of videos here on YouTube on how to construct procedural buildings using geometry nodes. And I thought um, this would be a good idea to construct with handrails with geometry nodes. For demonstration, I switch to another Blender project. We have our node setup here and this node setup has two inputs. We can adjust the endpoint of our handrail. And we can adjust the number of brackets. To make sure everyone can follow this tutorial, I model a simple version of the object we need later in the geometry node setup. I created a new scene. First we delete the camera and the point light. Press 1 on the numpad to go to front view. Select your default cube and go to edit mode. Scale it down a little bit. Then go to face select mode. Select the top face and extrude it up. and press G, X and move it forward a little bit. When we go to edge select mode, select the front edge here, press double G to slide it along the edges. When we go to face select mode again, select the top face, press I to insert a new face and extrude it once again. You can move it downwards a little bit and rotate it around the y-axis. So this will be our bracket. When you finish your bracket, we go to object mode once again, type 1 on the numpad and with shift A we add another cube. This will be our rail. We go to edit mode and press SX to scale it on the X direction and move it up to this position. And for the difference object, we need um, we use a simple cylinder to subtract a cylinder from our rail and to create our screw holes. So we go to object mode again Type Shift A, Add Cylinder. Go to Edit Mode, scale it down, move it up, G Set, rotate it around the Y axis 90 degrees, R, Y, 90, and move it a little bit forward, like this. Make sure it stucks a little bit in our rail so we can apply the difference object operation let, later on. I renamed our objects for convenience and you can select the screw hole object or the cylinder and go to object and select this option shade smooth. It looks a little bit weird right now. So we go to object data properties, normals and activate the option auto smooth. It is very important that the origins of all of our objects are in the world origins. If you move your object in object mode, it can differ from the world origin, like our cylinder here. To fix this, you can press shift S 
and move the cursor to the world origin. And then you select your object, go to object menu, set origin, origin to 3D cursor to fix that. Now we can start with our geometry node setup. First, we make a new collection, name it invisible. And move the rail object and the screw hole object into this new collection and hide it from the scene. Select your bracket, go to modifier step and select geometry nodes. Switch to the geometry node editor and zoom a little bit so we can see the nodes. For our rail we want a bracket at the beginning and at the end and if we increase the number of the brackets we want brackets in between. So the plan here is to create a line from the start point to the end point and for every point on this line we want to instance our bracket object. To create our line we go to mesh primitives and add a mesh line node. Connect the count input to the group input so we can create a new input here and type in 2 for the beginning. Press shift A and go to vector, add a combine XYZ vector and connect the vector into the offset and the Y input into the group input and type in 2 for the beginning. Set the mesh line node to endpoints and we can test this node when we plug it into the group output and we see a simple line. We created a line with two points, a start and the end point. We can increase the points on our line by increasing the number here. And we can adjust the length of our line by adjusting the y value. Now we need to instance our bracket object on every point of our line. So we add under instances a point on instance node, connect the mesh output of our mesh line node to the points and connect the instances to group output. And now we need a instance object, so connect the geometry to the instance input. And we achieved our first goal. We create a bracket on the start and the end point. And with a count, we can adjust the number of brackets in between. To keep things organized, we can select our nodes and press Ctrl J to create a frame and we name it brackets. And under properties, we can increase the size of a label. The next step is to work on the handrail. We add a geometry join geometry node and we add on our input an object info node. Select our rail object and plug it into the join geometry. And now we compute uh, the position vector of each vertex in our rail object. And if the y component is greater than zero, we shift the point to the end point. And we don't touch the point if the y component is negative. Set the mode of the geometry proximity node to points and now we can analyze our y value. Go to utilities and math and set the math node to greater than, plug the y value in the value and set the threshold to zero. We add another math node and set it to multiply, connect the greater than output in the first input and the y of our group input into the second input 
and duplicate the math node once again, set it to add, plug in the value into the first input and the original y into the second. And now it's time to combine our translate vector. We add a combine xyz node, plug in the value into the y input and the x to the x and the z to the z. And now we need to apply our translate vector to every vertex in our mesh. Go to geometry set position, connect it with the position vector and connect the geometry into the geometry and the geometry into the joint geometry. And now we have constructed our rail. We can play around and it seems to work. Once again, select our nodes and press Ctrl J to create a frame and name it rail and increase the label size if you want. With our knowledge from the previous elements, we can create the screw holes very easily. We need an um, uh, instance on point node, we need our mesh line, and we need an, another object info node. We set it to screw hole, connect it to the instance input, and connect the mesh line into the points. And we can disconnect our rail. We add a mesh boolean node, connect the rail into the mesh one input, connect the, our instance on points into the mesh two input, and connect it into our join geometry nodes. And now we have created our screw holes. They are looking a little bit strange. This option under normals auto smooth seem not to work in this context. You can try to add on a mesh a split edge node to activate flat shading for the screw holes. At the end of the modeling stage, you want to apply your modifiers to apply a texturing, for example. But when you do that, this happens, the brackets disappear. And we can fix this by adding uh, on the instance, a uh, realized instance nodes, so that our instances from these nodes um, get transformed in a real mesh so that we can keep our geometry after applying the modifiers. Yeah, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.